In this installment in the Getting Started with SPAD Next video series, we're going to look at the SciTech or Logitech multi-panel and how we can easily grab online snippets and bring these devices into our existing profiles. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So here we are with SPAD.next and we're going to head over to our panels and we're going to highlight our multi-panel. Here we have a brand new multi-panel that we just bought and we've plugged it in and following the steps in the last video we've been able to make sure that it is up and running and all the displays are working. Of course you could always go to profiles and go to online profiles and look for profiles based on uh, this aircraft, based on a search and looking for similar devices. However, in my case, I was already working with my own working title CJ4 configuration. And now I've got my new panel. I don't really want to load somebody else's profile and then figure out how to move things around. So instead, I've come here. I'm going to click on the device. And by clicking on either a button or the screen, I'm going to see the right hand side become available. So now of course I could add an event and when you click on the screen the events available to you are what are being displayed when it's in the selector position for altitude, what's the display mode, tuner clockwise, tuner counterclockwise. So you're just controlling what's going on in relation to that knob. If I don't have anything clicked on all of this is basically unavailable because it doesn't know what you're trying to do. So the first step, click on the screen, click on a button. Now we're going to go to the online snippets or device and functionality database. The reason why it's called snippets is it could just be something to do with the altitude selector or it could just be IAS hold button, it could be the heading mode you can break this down to individual pieces and just bring in those events. In our case, we want to take in the complete device. Now what you're going to see is a ton of things out there that people have published. Now what you'll notice is this list though is slightly curated because there is a box currently checked for only for this aircraft. So right now I'm only going to see things for the CJ4. Or if somebody published for all aircraft. So when we're publishing snippets we can decide whether it's any aircraft or only the ones we specify and select. You can also search and parse this. So in my case I know I have built a multi-panel for this plane and I'm looking for it so I'm going to search under Les O'Reilly. So now it's going to parse on the author and here I've got a bunch of multi panels some of which I published for all planes because it may have been G1000. I do mention which plane I was in when I was building it. Um, some of my older standard autopilot again that's not standard or default that was mine that I used as a base for most standard airplanes. That's 2016 that's actually P3D stuff. Anything Microsoft related, I've been trying to put Microsoft Flight Sim into it. In this case, I put working title CJ4. I'm going to grab the working title CJ4 multi panel autopilot. And this is important because it's using Sim Connect, LVARS, and Microsoft Flight Sim H events. So it's using a whole bunch of stuff to make this work with the CJ4. Do you want to replace all events? And I do. I want this to be wiped clean and I want my CJ4. And as you can see right away we picked up data. With just a few clicks we've gone from plugging in a brand new multi-panel and downloading a panel into my existing profile without having to wipe out the whole thing. So I know that sometimes that can be a little uh, confusing. Some people are like is there a profile for this aircraft? What you'll hear from a lot of people in the forums or in the Discord is, oh, well, yeah, you can take my profile, but I've also published these as devices 
in case you've already built out a bunch of stuff or because you may be missing some of the devices that they don't have. So you might take their online profile, get a bunch of devices that you own taken care of, but then that person in that profile didn't have a multi-panel. Well, now I can open up, download the multi-panel and away I go. So here I can see that with my altitude selected on the device selector, my window is going to show me um, the display of autopilot lock variable one. So that's what the CJ4 uses. Uh, that allows it to disconnect its information from the actual SIM autopilot under the hood. Uh, and that's the one that they drive with. Then we can also use the altitude variable increase and variable decrease to send the events that will increase or decrease the altitude selector. On the VS knob, we've gone ahead and we added the autopilot vertical hold variable one. So that's the vertical speed that they're tracking. So again, we drive that with these events, being able to mark our vertical speed that we want to set before enabling vertical speed mode. For IAS mode or flight level change speed, we can't change the words on the left of the panel. Those are actually hard coded into the multi panel, uh, so we can't change what's there. So it'll always say IAS. So this uses the airspeed hold variable, uh, and then you're increasing the airspeed increase or decrease on heading mode. We are adjusting the heading. Uh, autopilot heading lock direction, autopilot heading lock direction, uh, we're incrementing and decrementing by one. Now the reason for using this instead of an event. So what's cool about this is we can now leverage acceleration if we're doing things that are data changes. So add action, change data instead of a SIM event. So with this data event, I can turn on acceleration. And we can do the same thing for the clockwise turn. So um, that's also data, so we can turn on acceleration. And now what you're gonna see is if we spin it fast, it's gonna do multipliers. So it can have a multiplier by three, and the faster you spin it, the more that multiplier will go up. And we set the maximum multiplier to 20. So again, there's a threshold of how many clicks, what the timeout is, so half a second timing out from figuring that your acceleration. Then, what's my multiplier? My standard multiplier is moved by three, and my max multiplier is 20. And that's going to multiply one times 20. So as we were spinning there, the max it would ever increment at one time would be by 20. So that's the difference between incrementing and decrementing the actual value versus sending the simulation command to increment the event. Unfortunately, with events, we can't use acceleration. Uh, with course, this is setting our nav OBS1. And again, because we're using the data incrementing, we're now able to go ahead and leverage acceleration. That's pretty cool stuff. So continuing on, obviously you can drop off at this point. You've seen everything you need to download and move on. But for those that want to understand a little bit more, we're just continuing on. The autopilot button is programmed with a couple of things. So there's the ability to send events from the button, as well as the ability to define the data that is going to light up that button. So in the case of the data, what we did was we clicked on the button, we hit add event. So now what you're going to see here is there is a press short and a press long. So push the button short, that's less than one second by default. And press long is greater than one second by default. 
though you can adjust your default value. You can also have that a separate event is sent when you release the button. Short mode activated, short mode deactivated, long mode activated, long mode deactivated. Now these take place when other events can activate the button. Now what you're going to see is what I used is change button light event. Now this works as well because what happens is in the case of the CJ4 or a lot of the GFC 500s and the G1000s, they have toggle buttons and then they have LEDs. So the button press is a toggle less than one second that is going to send the AP master event. So that was simply add event, press short, add action, and that's a simulation event. That's not a data value change. We want to send a simulation event and we looked for uh, master and under sim connect AP master. And you'll see here on the left hand side, it tells me this is this toggles the autopilot on and off. So this is the toggle command. This is perfect for the use in the working title CJ4, which has a button and you can toggle it on and off. So this is going to send the event to the sim, but we want the LED not to be controlled by the button. We want the LED to be controlled by the simulator data. So here what we've done is we went to add event, change button light. So now we can set up the conditions and you hit add condition and you're picking from the simulation data. So we'll just open up what we did. So here we picked the simulation data of autopilot master and you can, you know, just type in autopilot and it's going to parse all of the autopilot events. And if we look for master, hey, there's our autopilot master. It'll even tell us it's a Boolean and has an on off flag. So a one or a zero and it's currently a zero. So what we did was we said, well, when the autopilot master is equal to one, that's our valid condition. Uh, change button light mode. We want the multi-panel. We want the autopilot on off button and we want short mode, which means permanent on. So on versus flashing, right? So you can also have multiple events. So you can have things flash it, plus make sure when it's flashing to then also turn it, the short mode version off as well. So we set it up for short mode on this condition and we clicked OK. Then we came to autopilot master is equal to zero. We're going to set the light to off. So if it's a zero, then we turn off that backlighting. Pretty much all you have to do in trying to think about how we define these. Now where things start to differ is where we've got the working title CJ4. And here they've actually got an event for what they call H events or Microsoft calls H events. These are gonna be found under send simulation event Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 events. Now what's great is you usually can come in and see them parsed through, uh, but it looks like some of these are not sorted. So I usually just highlight. And in this case, I look for working title underscore, and I'm gonna find a whole bunch of working title. You can also just go CJ4, and you're gonna find that there's also a whole whack of those inside of here as well. So under these, that's where I came in and I found the autopilot heading uh, pressed HTML um, event. Uh, and then there are some key events, but the HTML events, those are your H events. And so with those, we've gone ahead 
and we've made it so that we can press that button. So that button, that event will be pressed and that will put it into the working titles heading mode because they have a custom autopilot. Now, what I did uh, was I added the ability to press the center key, which is the sync heading. Um, but I did it in a way that I usually do for all my autopilots. I don't actually press the button because some don't have it or that functionality doesn't exist in the sim. So instead, what I actually do is I have it that when I hold the heading button for longer than one second, I have it do a add action, change data value. But what I did was I changed the autopilot heading lock direction. I set it, but instead of a fixed value, I changed it to a value of another variable. And for it, I used plane heading degrees magnetic. So this is the actual heading the plane is flying. And so that works perfectly to sync the heading bug for us. And so by holding that down, I created my own heading bug sync. Under nav, you're gonna find short mode off. You're gonna find uh, short mode on. These are following the CJ4's nav LVARs. So for the nav mode, they have their own LVARs because actually under the hood, the CJ4 uses heading mode and VS mode all of the time. All the other modes are all done in their custom autopilot and uses their LVARs. So you're gonna find these, these data values are actually under the LVAR section. And there's a whole bunch of working title uh, CJ4 LVARs that you'll find, including things like traffic, top of descent, the V1, V2s, the V app, V app on. There's a lot of CJ4 LVARs uh, that we can get access to to do things in the sim. So that's really cool. So now that we've got all that set up, short press, we're sending one of those H events, which is press the nav key. Under the speed, works the same way. There's an LVAR for flight level change and an L, uh, H event for FLC mode. Altitude, common theme here. We got the hold, their LVAR, we got the button pressed. VS, we got the working title VS mode. We've got their button pressed. There is the working title approach mode and that we just have to track the autopilot approach hold because under the hood, they do use the approach mode of the sim, but they let you press their button. So I replaced the reverse course button and I use that for VNAV. So using the VNAV ons and the autopilot VNAV HTML event. Over on the auto throttle, uh, there is no auto throttle, right? CJ4, you manually fly. So I use this as a means to turn on and off the flight director. However, because this is a switch, I went ahead and I made these conditional events. So I send the toggle event because it's the only way to turn the flight director. You can't just set flight director on or off. You can only trigger it with the toggle, but I'll only send it when the switch turns on if autopilot flight director is currently inactive. If it's already on, then the switch won't take it out of sync. So on the off side, we did the same thing. Check that it's actually a one so that the flight director is active before you tell it to go off. Flap events, we're using flap increase, flaps down, um, so what happens here is for a short press in the uh, down button, we can increase the flaps by one event, but if we hold it for a full second, it will send the flaps full down. Same thing on the upside, we have bring the flaps up or decrease the flaps uh, with a short press, so one, one notch or take it all the way up. Elevator nose down, let's trim. Now I'm using trim percent by one. 
you could also instead of decrementing the uh, percentage you could instead be sending sim events but this is great because we can turn on all of those acceleration features and now we can get the trim moving at a much faster rate when we need or dial it in at a much slower rate. So that also is better because I think some people are saying that they're having trouble um, with changes after software update five, that sending trim up, trim down um, events was moving pretty um, sensitive. So maybe by going by percentage, we could always dial that in and go 0.5% uh, and we'll now be able to dial in I made some changes in this and we kind of improved it. So let's go ahead and publish. So if you've never published a device, this is how we do it. So I'm gonna highlight it. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna publish. We're gonna go Microsoft Flight Sim Working Title CJ4. Now we wanna do not a complete event. I want the complete device. So we want the complete device I don't want all aircraft. I want to select specifically uh, the Citation CJ4 because again, this is actually the working title mod. So this isn't really going to help other planes because it's specific to their LVARs and H events. So now that we've submitted it, it's up there. We've got it. And so for those of you that stuck on, you now know, wait, I shouldn't follow what Les did at the beginning of the video. I should be clicking on the screen, going to online snippets. I should be going for complete device. I should search for Les O'Reilly. And hey, I now see he's got that version two panel. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to download that unit and replace everything. Well, there you have it. That's the basics for pulling down a panel for any plane, but then a little more in depth on how to use it with the working title CJ4. All right, guys, thanks for watching. As always, please hit that like button if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't and come along with us next time. We're gonna talk about the radio panel in this Getting Started featured series. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.